Vocabulary. Let me start with a question. How many English words do you know? And another question, maybe a more difficult question, what do you know about these words? So you may know the spelling, you may know the meaning, um, imi, the meaning, the English meaning is often not the same as the Japanese meaning or the Japanese translation. Um, the sound of the word, you know what the word sounds like. Do you know a definition of the word? Um, do you know how to use the word, the usage? Uh, do you know collocations? Uh, collocations are words that go together with each other. Do you know which words it goes with? And uh, how about nuances? Some words have a positive meaning. Um, some words have a negative meaning. Do you know if the word has a positive meaning or a negative meaning? Um, in general terms, when we're talking about vocabulary, when we're talking about knowing words, we have what's called receptive and productive knowledge. So there are some words that we can, if we hear the word, we understand it. That's receptive. Or if we read a word, we understand. Um, whether we can say the word or write the word, that's productive. Um, there's also what's called pragmatic knowledge of words. So this is about knowing how to use the words and when to use the words. And of course, there are two, two different kinds of language with often two different words, spoken words and written words. So spoken language is often different to written language. And of course, a, a spoken word is different to a written word. Um, so these are all the kind of things we may know about words. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to test your vocabulary. So I'd like to test how many words you know and test how well you know those words. And testing vocabulary is difficult. It's difficult to make a good vocabulary test. Um, it's quite easy to make a bad vocabulary test. And I'm afraid you have probably had many bad vocabulary tests. I'm sorry. Um, I'd like you to help me to make a good vocabulary test. And let's just start by thinking about different kinds of questions. Um, the first two kinds of questions we may come across are called multiple choice and uh, true false. Um, this is an example of a multiple choice question. Um, what is a proposal, a discussion topic, a question, a controversial statement that you can either agree with or disagree with. And here is a true false question. A debate is an argument competition between two teams. Um, so you can see a true false question, true or false, multiple choice question has multiple answers. Uh, which is easier, multiple choice or true false? Um, and why is why is it easier? Well, you're probably thinking that a true false question is easier than a multiple choice question. Um, and the reason is that a true false question has fewer choices. So true is either true or false. Multiple choice, maybe there may be an A, B, C, D, E even. Um, and uh, why are few choice, fewer choices easier? Well, there are a couple of reasons. One reason is um, if you don't know the answer and you're guessing, um, true, false, you've got a 50-50 chance of getting the right answer. If it's a four answer, multiple choice, you've got a 25% chance of getting the right answer. So that's just guessing. That's if you don't know. Um, even if you are not guessing, with a true-false, there is less reading to do. So with a multiple choice, you have to read the question and then you have to read several different answers and understand them. Whereas a true-false, you just need to read the question 
and then decide is it true or false. So there's less work also for a true false than a multiple choice. Um, next question then. So there are different kinds of questions. There are what are called open questions and closed questions. Um, here is a, an open question. Um, what does controversial mean? Can you um, write, if you have a pen, pencil, 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 and a piece of, um, piece of paper, please just uh, write down the, um, write down the answer. What does controversial mean? Please write the answer, in English, of course. And um, here then is a closed question. Uh, please choose the best definition of controversial. Um, something you are against, fighting with other people. Some people agree and some people disagree. So um, we can see an open question at the top, a closed question at the bottom. Again, let me just ask, which do you think is easier? Is an open question easier? Um, a question where you have to give the answer or a closed question? A question where you need to choose the answer from a limited range of answers. Um, you're probably thinking that a closed question is easier and I think a closed question probably is easier. Uh, less writing and again you can guess the answer. With an open question it's more difficult to guess the answer. Um, now imagine you're a teacher. Which do you think is easier to mark? If you have, if you have um, 40 students in your class and you need to give a score to each person on their test. Um, is an open question easier to mark or is a closed question easier to mark? Probably you'll find closed questions easier to mark. Um, open questions, you need to read every, everybody's answer. With a closed question, you can just look and very quickly see what the answer, whether they got the correct answer. So um, next, so those are, those are, we've looked at three kinds of questions so far. We've looked at um, multiple choice, we've looked at true, false, and we've looked at open questions. Uh, true, false, and multiple choice are called closed questions. Um, this is another kind of closed question, which is called a matching question. And um, we usually have uh, some choices on one side and some other choices on the other side and we need to match them together so find what goes with what. Now you notice with this one there are four on the left and five on the right. This means one of the ones on the right we're not going to use um, which makes it a little bit more difficult. Uh, so anyway, that's, there's a matching question for you. So there are four formats of questions. Uh, true, false, multiple choice, matching, and open. Those are the formats of the questions. Let's look next at what the content of the questions are going to be. Um, let's just think a moment about translation. Which one do you think is easier? Is it easier to translate Japanese into English or English into Japanese? Um, I find I find Japanese to English easier. If Japanese is your first language, you probably find the other way around English to Japanese easier. Um, however, um, please use English. We're not going to do any translation questions. Uh, please don't use Japanese on this vocabulary test. Uh, what I would like you to do is think about some vocabulary items. So um, please think of one of the one of the topics that we are going to talk about. Uh, write it down on a piece of paper and and then try and think of um, think of some words or phrases that are connected to that topic. Uh, try and think of five words or five phrases, uh, write them down. Uh, you may want to look at the topic where people have been talking about it, look at what people have said, 
if you can find some sources, some internet sources about the topic, then maybe you can look up there and find some words or phrases. Try and find five words or phrases. Have you finished? Oh, press pause. <laughs> find five words or phrases and then you can start the video again. So from your five words or phrases, I'd like you to choose one of them. And two things I'd like you to do. First of all, is to write a definition in English. So what does the word mean? Just use one of the words. Um, write a word, write a definition. And probably with the same word, try and write an example sentence using that word or try and find an example sentence. If you have the internet, find a sentence with that word is in the sentence. Um, go ahead and do that. When you've finished, my next question, which one is easier? Is it easier to write a definition or is it easier to give an example? Uh, next question, then, if you think, imagine you're the teacher and you're trying to test whether people understand a word, which one is better at telling you whether they understand the meaning of the word? Um, does a definition, if you look at a definition they've written, will that tell you whether they understand? Or will an example tell you whether they understand? Uh, please um, think about this. And please think about your next assignment, which is, uh, I want you to make a vocabulary quiz. And this is what I'd like you to do. First of all, um, choose a topic. Choose one of the topics that we're going to be talking about in class. And try to find 10 vocabulary items. So when I say vocabulary item, this could be a word. Or it could be a phrase, it could be a group of words that have a particular meaning. Um, then I'd like you to make questions and then there is a quiz where you need to add the questions. So just to remind you in terms of format, um, there are four different kinds of question, short answer, multiple choice, matching and true, false, and I'd like you to make one each of these question types, these question formats. Um, please, if you're making a multiple choice question, um, make sure that the answers are in a logical order, if there is some logic. So four, six, eight, ten would be a logical order. Six, eight, ten, four is not logical. Um, if you choose few distractors, it makes it easy to guess the correct answer. Um, if you have many uh, many distractors, it's difficult to make because you have to think more carefully. You have to write more answers, but also you have to think more carefully as how you can make an answer um, that's not too easy to guess um, and not too difficult. I would recommend using between three and five answers for your multiple choice questions. Um, Four may be best um, for um, maybe, or three is fine, five is fine. Um, four is the TOEIC is often used for questions. So for practicing the TOEIC test, four may be best. Uh, and you can choose, if you have one correct answer, have two, two answers that are close to the correct answer and add a, add a joke answer for a bit of entertainment. Make your quiz fun. Um, so in terms of the content of the question, there are different ways we can um, look at the content. We can go from definition to word, or we can we can try gap fill. Um, so here are some questions for you to think about. Um, a group of words beginning with a capital letter and ending with a full stop and containing a complete idea is called a... Um, can, there's a definition. What's the word? And the next one, fill in the missing um, good luck. So I'd like you to make some questions. Start off with the words. Then when you have words, make some questions. Um, I'd like you to make one true false question. Probably 
this will be a definition. It doesn't have to be, but um, I suggest you make a definition with a true-false question. Um, one multiple choice question, um, perhaps a gap fill. So find a sentence, take a word out, and then give us four choices for what the word should be. Um, a matching question, perhaps definitions or synonyms. And um, one short answer, so perhaps a gap fill. Um, give us a sentence, take a word out, and we have to write the word that fits in the place. Uh, just to remind you of the format, um, and tell you the exact format I'd like you to write in the quiz. Um, so this is a true-false question. For true-false, please use, use curly brackets and um, true, if true is the correct answer, all capital letters. Um, what kind of question is this? This is a multiple choice question. So again, the answer goes in curly brackets. The wrong answers get a squiggle and the correct answers get an equal sign. Um, next, um, if it's a matching question, um, then this is the format for a matching question. So an equal sign, then one part, and then an arrow with a, a minus and a greater than, and the two parts there. And again, squiggly curly brackets around the around the answer. This is a open question. So an open question again, curly brackets, curly brackets for the answer. Equal sign shows the correct answer. And a star is a wild card. So if you add a star, it's possible for people to add a longer answer and still get the correct part correct. Um, just something to be careful of. Um, Zenkaku moji are not English. Uh, so when you're typing in English, when you're using a computer in English, use the keyboard. Don't use the input. Don't use the Japanese input. If you're using Japanese input, it might be adding Japanese characters. If it's adding Japanese characters, often they cannot be read by a computer or by someone who's reading in English. Um, use the keyboard. Um, the keyboard contains pretty much everything you need to write in English. Um, there's some um, somewhere up, um, very difficult to do this backwards and upside down. Um, there is around here, one of these, that's the shift, and there will get you the um, squiggly thing. The brackets, that's a curly bracket open, curly bracket closed. Um, use the keyboard um, if you want to, um, there's a minus, uh, that's the minus, and the equals is shift and this. Um, you've got the greater than is somewhere there, so shift and there, if it's greater. So use use the keyboard, don't use um, the Japanese input. Um, so, rules. There should be one correct answer to each of your questions. If there is more than one correct answer, um, then it's not going to work. Um, each item, so you should start off with 10 words or phrases and use each of them only once. Don't use the same word in two different questions. Um, please use correct grammar and appropriate vocabulary. So try and use um, try and use real English, and try and use good grammar. Um, and think about the meaning. So when you're making questions, think about what the question means. Don't just think, "Oh, here's a word. I'm going to add this word and add this word and add this word." Think about the whole meaning. And um, so. Um, what does, here's another question for, this is a multiple choice question. Um, what does definition mean? What does definition mean? Um, the act of making something distinct or clear. The formal statement of meaning of a word or phrase. The condition of being clearly outlined. 
the accuracy of sound or picture reproduction. Um, what does definition mean? Now, if you look at a dictionary, you'll find all of these meanings because, in fact, definition has more than one meaning. Um, in fact, the answer is that definition can mean any of these meanings, um, and it depends on the context. We are, here are some more guidelines for you. Um, choose the meaning, think about the topic, and think about the word as we will use the word talking about your topic. So please tell us. Um, so, for example, in this case, in this case, um, we're talking about definitions. We're talking about the formal statement of the meaning of a word or a phrase. So in this case, in my presentation, I'm talking about the second, the second meaning. Um, so think about your case. What's your topic and which meaning is the right meaning for your topic? Don't just look in a dictionary and pick the first meaning. Um, find real language. Don't just make up a sentence. Go and find a sentence. You can look on the internet. There's lots of English there. Uh, look in a book um, and find find something real. And if you want to find a definition, um, you may be able to think of a definition yourself. I would recommend look in a dictionary. If you look in a good English English dictionary or on the internet, there are many dictionaries online. Go and find a definition um, go and find a definition. Um, for your vocabulary quiz, um, good words or phrases. Try and find words that most people don't know, but that will be useful for them to know. So we're going to be talking about the topics. What's a word? What words will help us to talk about the topic and understand the topic? Uh, and maybe even think of words that will be useful in the future. Um, those are the ideal words. Those are the ideal phrases. Uh, next, then, just these are some of the kinds of questions. I see lots of tests. And as I said at the beginning, um, most vocabulary tests are not very good. It's difficult to make a good test. Um, these are the kind of questions I don't like. Um, here's another kind of question I don't like. And here's another kind of question I don't like. Uh, these are all question types that I, I don't like. When I see these, I think, I wonder why. Well, I know why people, I know why people have made these questions. Um, but I don't like these questions. The reason why, um, the reason why um what happens um when you're trying to answer these questions um let me just digress a bit so how good is your english um i guess you're not so happy with your level of english you probably think you probably wish your english was better um and why is your english not better i think Mostly it's time. If you want to be good at English, it's very, very simple. You need to spend time in English. If you spend more time reading in English, listening to, an, listening to English, thinking in English, if you spend more time with English, then your English will get better. Very, very simple. That's really all. That's why my English is good. That's why my English is probably better than your English, because I've spent more time in English. That's why your Japanese is probably better than my Japanese, because you've spent more time in Japanese. So um, when we're looking at input, which is better to see a lot of correct natural English or to see a lot of incorrect or unnatural English? Um, is this good input? So for those questions before where you have a 
um, you have a sentence that's bad English and you have to find the good English. What you're doing now is you're looking at a bad English sentence. When there are choices of words, many of the words are the wrong word, you're putting the words in, again, lots of bad English sentences um, on the internet. This is all this is all bad English. So when we're reading the quizzes, I'd like people to read good English. So try and use all of the questions, even if it's multiple choice, each of the answers should be in good English. They don't have to be correct, but the English should be good, natural English. And uh, there's an expression, garbage in, garbage out. And it's the same with language. If you're if you're putting garbage English in, then garbage English is going to come out. So let's find good English. Um, use definitions. When you're looking for a definition, use an English English dictionary. Um, don't just make something up. Um, you don't need to make up a definition yourself. Go to the internet and read definitions. Read five different definitions from the word. Pick the best one. Um, find examples. If you're trying to find an example of a, a word in a sentence, um, read the sources. Go onto the internet, look at English language websites, look at English publications and find the word as it's being used for talking about our topic. Uh, which leads to the next thing, which is think about the meaning. So every question you're making, um, look at the whole sentence, look at the whole meaning and make it mean something, make it real. Uh, good luck.